What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classic Clown Blog. If you're coming in late, that's okay. Drop your city and state in the chat. I am inspired to do this show. Um, I saw Man of Tomorrow. I saw several other people um, talking about social circles, and I just knew how important it was for me to address this. Uh, and, and again, shout out. Like, this, me seeing this a couple years ago made me want to talk about it. Now, here's here's... <laughs> Come in, drop your city and state for sure. I want you guys to get in here so we can chat on it. Because when people talk about, oh, you got to change your mindset, man. Just change your mindset, right? <laughs> uh, a lot of people get mad. They go, well, poor people can't just change their mindset, Erica. They can't just change their mindset. Poor people struggle. And Listen, listen. And I'm going to tell you this. And, and again, people hate hearing this. People hate being reminded of this. But 90% of money problems are uh, spiritual, mental, and emotional. 90%. That other 10%, it can be racial. can be people won't put them on a job. They can't get a job. They're in a bad location. But the 90% of financial problems and life problems comes from uh, lack of money, and it's mostly spiritual, mental, physical. All right. <laughs> and so here, here, I'm going to break it down for you about social circles and the numbers and the math and all that good stuff. And so I'm going to go drop your city and state in the chat for you. Help me out here. But I'm going to share my screen again. And, and I'm because I talk about avoidable women, avoidable men, and people get really upset. Like, why are you talking about these things? Why are you saying these things? And so this is actually a um, something from Autism Awareness, which it just it just happened to be nice. The diagram happened to be nice. So, you know, can everybody hear me and see me? Hopefully so. This diagram just happened to be a good diagram for what I'm trying to talk about. OK, because what ends up happening to a lot of folks is they go, Erica, I'm a lone wolf, man. <laughs> I, I do what I want. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I do what I want to run off in the woods. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, whatever. You know, whatever you tell yourself on the Internet. Now, look here. The purple is me. Right. Again, we'll talk like we're children. The purple is me. The blue is family. The green is friendship. The yellow is acquaintance. The orange is community helpers. The red is strangers. Right. So, you know, stranger danger. But majority of the money that you will make when you start your business is none of these people but the red. <laughs> It will be strangers who do not know you, okay? Why is that? Because your circle circle consists of people seeing you a particular way. Your circle circle, if you have come from a family of firefighters and you decide to be a cop, the amount of pushback you will receive from your family will be astronomical because they're a family of firefighters that don't like cops. OK, um, if you decide that you want to go join the Air Force and your family is full of army people, they will look at you crazy. Why would you do this thing that we don't know? It doesn't work. So when people realize that just on this level, right, let's go mentally deeper. If you come from a family of poor people and you want to do start being productive, work a job, pay your bills, marry a woman, have children with just that one woman, that family of dysfunction is like, man, you're a sucker. Look at you going to work, making something of yourself. Can you give me some money? You don't want to get money. How dare you? A lame. Right? So again, social circles matter because again, it starts with you. But as you look at the thing, the closest next to you is your family. Next is friends. Next is acquaintances. Next is community helpers. Right? But the red is strangers. So you have to go so far out of your circle to get to the strangers. Many people don't want to do it. Okay? So again, okay? Again, all right? Let me try and explain it one more time. Let me do it like this. 80% of Americans make... Again, 75 million working Americans make $30,500 or less a year, according to the IRS and their tax dollars, their tax returns. But a bulk of a people in America are that 80 percent. It's that 30,000 to 80,000 uh, income range. And in, in the income range, you have it has about five categories, extremely poor, comfortable, but no, no surprises. Right. You could have two aunts and uncles. They're making 80 K. You know, they got a nice house. They go on vacations. But if a surprise happens, they thrown off just like someone who's in poverty. 
right? But the difference for them and the person that's making 30K or less a year, they won't lose their house, their car, and, and, and be in a, a downward dump spiral, right? This is why you'll talk to people who were making like 30K a year, their boyfriend's making 30, and they got a baby, and you look at them like, why did you have a baby? You don't have no money. Oh, we doing all right? No. <laughs> Do you know how much daycare costs? Do you know how much health care costs? You're not doing okay. You're doing very bad. And so people go, well, my mama made it. My cousin made it. My uncle made it. No, no, no. They survived, but they didn't thrive. This is why you can go on Facebook. This is why you can go on YouTube and you'll share this information. You'll share people going on vacations. You'll share people with cars and very regular life. And what ends up happening is other people are like, that. you're, you're bragging. You're, you're, you're showing off in front of me. No, this is their everyday life. This is why Michael Dell had to get his children off social media for a month because they were on a private plane eating caviar, laughing, talking about how this something didn't taste well. And people were like, look at these little brats. Right. The mass majority are like, ah, boo. Then you had um, I'm trying to think who 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 it was. I'm trying to think of the. Oh, man, I can't remember exactly who it was. Um, the dude that played in Doom, the recent movie Doom that came out. He basically was in an inter interview and kind of candidly just said, oh, I haven't been on an audition in seven years. And people were so offended. They're like, he's a nepotism baby. They even did a whole article. Like, I know y'all don't know this, but Meryl Streep has five children. They all act. Even one of her children changed their name because they were so tired of people saying, oh, you just got this job because your mom's Meryl Streep. Well, that's how it's always been in the movie industry. If you go to India right now, they, they kind of have a pushback in India because certain people have been in all the movies, the same family and all their children. And even though India is known for these big movies where there's anybody could become famous, it's these same families controlling things. What you end up learning is it's their social circle. Anybody who steps into that social circle will be just fine. I don't know if y'all remember the Kardashians. God, we, they, I know everybody's tired of them, but the Kardashians had these black friends, twins, and people were like, oh, who are these black girls? Where do they meet them at? School? Hanging out with basketball players? And it was like ugh, comical because the two black girls' family was actually wealthier than the Kardashians. The twins are Iranian. But see, in our mind, we think Iranian means white. All right? That's how limited our, our knowledge is. So they're hanging out with girls who are Iranian and they're Armenian. So we already don't even understand what we just saw. We just saw two Middle Eastern families hanging out that have high values of money. So their social circle is completely different, right? Their social circle is completely different. And if you notice the twin girls, they didn't date basketball players. They dated businessmen. They dated businessmen, okay? So when we talk about social circle holding you back, a lot of times we think, oh, I just need to get out more. I need to do this. No, you literally have to shoot past all these people and go straight to the red strangers okay so let me just let me just roll it back in a little bit that 80 percent is 30 to 80k a year that's why this whole average man conversation is hilarious because even if you ask these women let me put you in a new situation a new place you being the most beautiful girl living in the hood means nothing and even if i take you out of the hood and i put you over here do you know how to dress do you know how to talk do you know how to walk do you know how to be uh tactful Right. I went and got a massage and a facial the other day and the lady used the wrong phrase and I looked at her crazy. And then the, the, the owner of the company was like, oh, oh, like, you know, having the face like, oh, because she realized in that moment. This poor white lady is talking to me in lower terms, unaware that, I mean, just on a financial rank, I'm higher than her. Right. I don't want to be that asshole person for this conversation, but I have to be. And the way she's talking to me is not tactful for my station in life. And people get really offended when they start realizing that some people are in different stations in life and you will have to talk to them accordingly. Thank you. There you go, Sheree. That's what I'm trying to get to. Adequate training. Okay. So, so prime example, the other day they had um, the Purdy boy, the San Francisco Purdy dude, right? He's trying to take pictures with his family. The, the, the news is trying to capture it, the photographers. And there's some girl, she's beautiful. I'm pretty sure she's off Instagram or something. She's trying to take a picture with them. Literally, the camera people came and pushed her, like gave her a straight mush, like, get out of here. Get out of here, skank. This kid's, we're trying to take a, a professional photo. And so a lot of people think if I just make money and I get in these spaces, I will be in here. That's not true. <laughs> but 90% of the time, your social social heard you back. So listen, the 80% we already talked about, 30K to 80K.
Then you got a 10% that's making 100K a year to half a million a year. You can make a half a million a year and live in New York and still live like somebody making 100K in South Carolina. Right? The person in South Carolina probably might be living even better. They might have a bigger house and, and, and more trinkets and a few more vacations than the person in New York. You can make half a million in California and feel broke. We've had friends in San, Fr San Diego and San Francisco who made a million in a year and they're like, I feel like a pauper out here. I feel broca, le broca. Okay. It's because their social circle. If they take that million to go live in Las Vegas, they're balling. They take that million to go live in Houston, Texas, they're balling. They're in a whole other social circle. So again, there's another social circle, another 10%, really it's 9%. They get that half a million to three million a year income range. Then you got that top 1%, which is, is layers and layers into that. That 1% is making five million a year at, to infinity, right? And what you realize as you go up the rank in income, you start getting in different rooms, right? So even if I break it down this way, religion, religion uh, married, office, blue collar, white collar. I just kept it simple for those people. It's going to be hard for you to be in Utah and get invited to events if you're not married. Why? Because the culture there is a lot of high number of marriages. It's almost abnormal to not be married. I told you guys I go to a church where the average woman has four to six kids. The men make a lot of money and the children are usually in life, uh, young life. And so there's a family who has six kids. Their top oldest three kids are the oldest one is maybe like 22. The one after that is 20 and the one after that is 19. They're all married. The kids are married. Coming out of college. One of them's in college married. And so when we hear all this talk on the internet, like, but nobody's getting married, man. That's crazy talk. The fact that I know four black couples that got married in under a year of meeting each other and dating. This is why I laugh at some of this internet talk because I'm going, you're in a terrible social circle. You're in a group of people who are in poverty. They're not doing well. They're not happy. They're miserable. Now, you may have happy moments. You may have good weekends. You may have cookouts. You may be doing all this stuff. But at the end of the day, if you come on this internet and you listen to some of these men talk, they had mothers who had bad social circles, put them at bad churches. They put them around bad people. They put them in bad neighborhoods. And so when they tell you their experience on life, you already know, well, sir, your social circle is the result of A, B, C, D, F, G. And if I take you, young man, and send you across town and put you in a nice suit and put you in this office and you work for maybe two to three years, your life will be 100%, 180 degrees different. I've told y'all this several times. I was in Dallas and there was a black man. He had tattoos all over his face and he was trying to sell me something about a kid's baseball team. I know he was basically panhandling. And I said, man, sir, in another life, you would be an amazing salesman. Because I knew what I was saying is true. He had clear diction. He was talking. I just was like, man, if you didn't have these tattoos on your face and you weren't in this bad situation, maybe just out of jail, you could be a great salesperson. And you probably need to go find how to put makeup on your face and go get a sales job somewhere because you would be just fine. And what happens is when you're in a social circle where being functional and being successful is abnormal, then you get these results of these people's lives. Okay. So again, I can go office. Uh, I can go blue collar. There's a TV show called Blue Collar Millionaires and people are so offended. Oh my gosh. Right. Right. Well, if you put a blue collar millionaire somewhere where he's talking about he made millions of dollars off selling worms or doing porta potties or different things, the average person is going to look at him like, oh, well, that's nice. That's nice. Right. He's not going to sit in the room with Rockefellers. He's not sitting in the room with certain people. He's a blue collar millionaire. There's a reason they made that distinction. OK, even a white collar person. The reason we're having such problems with our population that's in their 50s is they get up to white collar in their 40s and 50s and then ageism starts happening. The average 60 year old person Roth IRA only has ninety three thousand dollars in it. The average. So they're not in a position where they can just go sit down and retire unless they take that money and loan against it. <laughs> right. And when you really try to talk to them, like they're living an upper class life, but if you take that job away, they don't have the investments. They don't have the social circle that can hold them up. I told y'all the number one reason I believe Jeremiah Bain and Dan allegedly have such huge YouTube channels, and this ain't even a hater thing. I'm gonna run ads against them in a, in a month or two. This ain't even a hater thing. 
this is they are the face of the white dude who's like, hey, what happened to my money? <laughs> the inflation's kicking my butt. Life is kicking my butt. I should have better, higher social standing than this. And they don't. They don't. Right? That's why these channels blow up, right? So, so again, these distinctions matter. These social circles matter, right? Um, again, yeah, the best age to get a job is 35. People in their 40s and 50s have a harder time. So when I sit here and tell you the number one a the age group where people are investing in real estate is 35 to 55, it's because people are getting brushed up against that pushback of life, of of seasonal seasons of life. They're getting pushed back where they should have already been on track. That's why when I tell y'all, it's uh, the reason I push tech so hard is because I was starting talking to recruiters and they're like, the average black person they saw going into entry level tech were like in their mid thirties. And I'm like, we're coming into the game late. And now we really have to fight to stay in the game for the next 20 years, right? But it's be- I'd rather fight for 150K income a year than fight with Debbie in accounting for 50K a year, right? I'd much rather fight for the 150. And keep educating myself and keep leveling myself up. That's why when I sit here and tell y'all, the stripper went into tech, she cleaned up her whole social media, and now she dresses different, she talks different. She didn't have a choice. She went into an environment, even if half the time she's working remote, that's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. And so when you hear these people, um, you know, I remember I was telling somebody that the person I'm getting ready to long term be with doesn't have any kids. They're like, what? He don't got no baby mamas. I'm like, no. Nah. No. No, he doesn't. And what happens is if you're in a social circle where every man in their mid 30s says, whoops, I had an accident. <laughs> I whoops up and had a baby. When you meet somebody who does it and they're like, dude, we live the same life. I was having the same responsibility, the same accountability as you. You realize we're in different social circles. Right. When I see a lot of African-American people complaining about dating online, I laugh because their counterparts are usually nine out of ten married and looking at you like, what is your problem over there? Figure it out. <laughs> you dig? Uh, it, it, you know, yeah, plenty of folks don't have kids. That's the that's the thing is you have a society now that's waking up and embracing the fact that there's a lot of people don't have kids. They don't go. OK, so let me let me switch over. Uh, let me switch over to the screen here real quick uh even i think manager tomorrow which I'm, I'm just using him as an example but he was talking about how he was um some young man got this new job and the girl he broke up with the girl and the girl called the police and said he beat her up now she knew what she said was untrue but the fact that this this man was leaving to go do what get a better job get a better life move to a different state and she was going to be stuck in that place i guess mississippi is where he was talking about People do that. His social circle was dealing with a very dangerous, avoidable woman who what was willing to call the police and lie, which would jam up one, his new job, his new opportunity, his new opportunity to move. This is why it's so important when I sit here and I hear these stories online, y'all are in the wrong locations, in the wrong places, trying to date the wrong people, trying to be friends with the wrong people. Oh, man, he's a good person. He just keep having bad habits in life or stuff keeps happening to him. No, no, no. You have to remove him from your daily circle. That's how that happens. Oh, well, I was just hanging out with my friend and then something happened and we got a car accident and then all of a sudden you're entangled in their bad life and their bad situations. When someone's always unlucky, someone's always got a problem, someone's always got an issue, pay attention, <laughs> okay? So one, this is, a, this is another article. Why do you lose friends when you become successful? It says, as our dreams get bigger, our circle gets smaller. Now, this is not always about, dang, can a screen act right? This is not always about money, right? I also want you guys to understand, sometimes if you become a friend who wants to travel a bunch more and you got friends who have like seven kids and they can't go with you, you might not be hanging out with them as much, right? Right? Oh, yes, they should. Cherie, they should. They should go straight to jail, Right? Oh, yeah. There you go. Patterns do not lie. Patterns do not lie. Uh, So, again, you're not relatable anymore. This happens often. You're exposed to news environments. Now, here's not only not only are you not relatable. um, I I have been in friend groups where I said, hey, this is the standard. And every month we're going to meet and talk about this. And when those people were like, no, I can't do it. What they were telling you is I'm comfortable right here. I don't want to go to the next level. I don't not financially, not emotionally, not spiritually. 
there are people I meet who are 40 years old, but you would think they were 19 the way they act and the way their emotional intelligence level is. It's very sad. Your success reminds people what they lack. This is a big thing. Your achievements can make people feel some type of way, especially those who started in the same place as you. This is a big factor. A lot of you will wake up and I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this out of personal experience. And just, I, I get so many phone calls from you guys who are like, Erica, all my people, you got to go meet new people. I'm so sorry. When you decide, let's say you're in trucking and you decide, hey, I'm going to trucking tomorrow, I'm going to tech. There's going to be a bunch of trucking guys who no longer want to talk to you. And that's just is what it is. If you're in tech and then you decide that you want to go do uh, entrepreneurship, you're going to lose a lot of those people. I know a guy right now who worked in insurance for, uh, what do you call it, Nationwide is on our side. Yeah, Nationwide. And he's been great, amazing in insurance for years. And he just had saved up his money. He was like, you know, I've been watching these real estate videos. I'm going to go flip a couple houses because I need something else in my life. I'm bored. If you could hear the conversations he had with so many insurance people who just refused to speak to him anymore, they just didn't even have him in his life. Like they just were like, oh, that guy over there. And he made millions of dollars flipping houses. But if you talk to people, they're like, oh, yeah, he, he do stuff in real estate. You would think he isn't doing anything. You think he maybe flips one house a year. This dude is killing it. And that's a white collar job. But see, when he went from white collar to where where he goes higher up, which is basically controlling your income, controlling your time, you're going to lose people. One of the best stories is the black couple that I from Dallas that I always used to come on talk about on the show. They had, were best friends with their neighbors. I mean, their friends were over every other weekend. They're doing cooking together. They're doing life together. And then they start talking about Dave Ramsey and how they're going to pay their house off early. And then they pay their house off early in nine years and their friends don't even speak to them anymore. And they live next door. So after they finished paying their house off, they went and traveled the world. And it's like their neighbors don't even look at them. These are people that they were basically every day, every night talking to. What's up, hey man? Let's have a cookout this weekend. You know why? Because when they started talking about Dave Ramsey and that couple was like, oh, that's silly, that's crazy. They thought that would pass. Now we're talking about nine years later and the other couple is living their life in their 40s, traveling, enjoying life. You know what the other couples probably would be talking about if they had a cookout this weekend? They'd be like, man, we're still in debt or car. Eggs cost so much. Oh my God, I'm struggling. When really, nine years ago, there was a decision made. There was a decision made. I'm going to do this different thing. Would you like to join me? Would you like to hear about it? Would you like to play cash flow with us? Right? Because sometimes when we start a new thing, we become diehard. There's a reason I told y'all, I don't want to speak to anybody who's not building construction right now. I don't get on the phone with them. I don't talk to them because we're not in the same conversation. But you're going to be talking about something over here. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Even digital creators. I'm like, I've done this for years now. This is like clockwork. We're going to talk about the same stuff and people and, and chargebacks and the same stuff over and over again. I'm like, here's your choice. Honestly, when it comes to creators, that at some point you go, I'm either going to pay for ads or I'm not. That's literally the choice. And after that, the conversation goes where it goes, right? I'm being honest. Like, I've been in rooms with creators who are like, look, I'm just going to spend 100K this year. I'm going to sit this American Express aside and we're going to spend it. And the other guy was like, I'm just going to keep going organic. I'm going to just keep trying to find these billions of ways and hours and times to do all this stuff. And they're like, okay, cool. We don't have the same conversations. <laughs> okay. Okay. So again, number three, following your dreams will keep you busy. Building a successful life will keep your plate full. You may hurt some feelings when you are no longer available like you used to be. This can be if you have kids. This can be if you get married. This can be if you just start a new job. OK, because what ends up happening is you're doing something new and it's taking up a bulk of your time. You can literally have a kid and everybody be like, oh, you're too busy now with your kid. I got to go. Ask people who have kids. They'll tell you how friends do disappeared. Right. Um, I <laughs> One of our uh, back a couple years ago, our singles group uh, minister was like they had friends that they used to hang out with all the time. They had kids and he's like, they've disappeared. They don't even come out their house for the past seven years. <laughs> and it's funny because I laugh, but I'm like, again, the mental bandwidth of most people is they can make maybe one or two heavy emotional decisions a day, right? They, they got up for work. They drove. They don't eat well. They don't take a lot of supplements. They ain't drinking enough water. They don't feel great. They come home. 
They put together some meal. They give it to their kids. Unless they go walking around the neighborhood or push themselves to go outside, get some exercise, they're going to sit on the couch for the next four hours, maybe throw some clothes in the washing machine, look at their kids. The kids ask them about some horror property. They don't know about it and veg out. And they do that on repeat. So here you come with all this energy like, yo, man, I just went to Zen support Africa, man. I'm going to go to Dubai, man. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to this conference over here. Man. And then I'm going to do this thing over here, man. I'm going to do this thing. Your energy's up here. They're up here talking about, girl, I just peeled myself off the couch to come to you. I'm tired. <laughs> right? And then you talk about, well, you should get some vitamins and water. And well, girl, I got kids. I can't do it. You know what I mean? So this is what happens. This is why you have to keep elevating and changing your social circles. And people get really like shocked that, the, oh, these people didn't come with me. This is crazy. Right? This is why, um, you know, how do you build these new circles, right? How do you build these new circles, right? You're going to have to go out alone. It is what it is. And have inviting body language. Please read these things about inviting body language. A lot of y'all go out with the mean mug face and that doesn't work. Catch flights, okay? High value people know the world doesn't revolve around their community. They love to travel. Say yes to the invite. There are sometimes I will invite people stuff and they'll be like, Erica, don't forget about me. I keep inviting me. I'm just busy right now. And I laugh because I go, you already know if I invite you three times, I bet I'm done, right? I even have a friend now who I'm like, hey man, they invited us again. Let me go ahead and just go ahead and say yes. Because I really want to be in their space. I want to connect with them. But that just happens, right? Even if you're, you know, this, this article says if you're not an outdoors person, give it a try. I took somebody outdoors and they were like, this is awful. I was like, well, let's take a different trail. Oh, okay, let's try that, right? And so a lot of times go to live events like conferences, workshops, seminars, where you meet other ambitious people. You can also attend these events virtually. So this is the thing. And follow up with the people you meet. If you go to one conference a quarter, so this year you meet four, just one person out of the conference is just amazing. Y'all connect, y'all talk on the phone. Now you got four new people in your circle that you're going to be on the phone with, you're going to be chatting with, you're going to be pushing life with. Already you're feeling the new fresh breath of air, right? I've gone to conferences and those people I've met in those room, I've, I'm doing million dollar projects with this year. 180 degree turn of life. Okay. Right. And then there's always I tell people have some friends that are older and have some friends that are younger. I have older friends. So when I'm starting to complain about stuff, I've already I see their life and then they can tell me like, girl, don't do that. I, we tried that. Don't do that. OK. I have some older friends who I see like, oh, that's what it would look like if I don't have kids. I gonna be that dog lady. OK. With some money, though. With some money, though, just that dog lady, though. Okay, okay, okay. I see if you this lady over here. Okay, right. Okay, she just travel all the time. Okay, right, 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 right. Like you literally, if you have friends who are five or ten years older than you, and, and you can call them acquaintances, friends, whatever, but you actually talk real life with them, they can help you miss some steps. They can help you say, hey, that's a minor thing. That's not important. Keep it pushing. And and I can tell you, I had older business people who were like, let me tell you what you need to do. Take a break, do this, do this, have kids, and come back in three years. You'll be a beast because it'll be just the right amount of time to catch the window, have those kids, enjoy that baby season. And then as you start, they start to get four or five and you're ready to do something because you're itching to do something again, you'll have that space, right? End up meeting a wonderful lady who flips houses, has a kids at home, has a nanny. She's like, oh, girl, I do about a few hours a day getting on phone with people, just trying to feel, you know, feel the pulse of the company and the business. And then I get back to my kids. Perfect. Works for me. Most of her day is like suburban life, home, stay at home mom. And then for a few hours a day, she does a little work and she has a nanny come over, help her for a few hours. So the kids don't come running out of the room with her, her office. But I wouldn't know that if I didn't what? Change my social circle. If I talk to some of these women out here, girl, you're going to be working and tired and these kids and the daycare and that's a choice. That's an absolute choice. I, every bit of that's a choice. The man you choose, the places you go to choose, the places you end up at. I keep telling people the reason I see women at these conferences, because at least to know the man you're going to meet in there is going to have some type of drive. He sacrificed his window, spent money to go to the event, put on clothes, act like he has some sense, just enough to be in the room with people. You're going to get a little bit more out of him than you're going to get out of the average dude. Just going to say that. I know it sounds rough. Even at Invest Fest in Atlanta, there were men in there in suits, right? Like sharp to the T. And then there were men in there in their, their slides. 
straight up in some slides and some slacks, some slides and some some pants that they wear at home, pajamas. And I was like, you came to Invest Fest in slides? What's going on with you, brother? You haven't you depressed? What's going on with you? Something wrong with you, baby. Get it to get it together. So I always recommend go to the website 10 times. Just look at different things in your career. You know, if, if you're a nurse, go look for nursing conferences. Go to different things, you know, in the medical field. See if there's other opportunities for you to meet people, right? Get educated. Getting educated will help you connect with like-minded people. This is why they did that article in New York talking about how, you know, most people are like, oh, people aren't having kids. But then they would look at the Jewish families. They would look at the Muslim families. They would look at the um, church-going families. And they had four to six kids three to four kids, higher number of kids than the average American, which is one, two, right? They, they really would have these higher number of kids. And when they interviewed them, on average, it was like, well, I'm so blessed financially. I'm just going, I'm going to have these kids, right? Um, and a lot of them had a different routine. They were healthy. They had access to health care. They had insurance. They had vacations. So when you're talking about that type of life, them having kids, it's a great time. But when you're somebody who's scrubbing the bottom for money and your circle circle is also scrubbing the bottom for money and then your mother's having to work because she can't be a retired grandma because she ain't got no money. And then you try to bring a child in that situation and then you're not married. You talking about hell. That's hell. But all that can be avoided if you just start what? Elevating your social circle. Stop dealing with people who keep having bad decision making choice. Like don't get rid of them. But you ain't going to talk to them every day. You may talk to them on Friday or Saturday. You may see them once a month. But your new schedule should be meeting new people. If, if, if I was somebody who was like, man, I'm single and I just want to go hiking, I would join hiking groups. I would join hiking groups. I would go join the RIA groups. I would go travel. I would do a lot of these things. Again, I already told my person, if we weren't attached, baby, I'd be over in Italy right now. I'd be overseas. Just chilling. <laughs> This all stuff can be done overseas, over the phone. The one or two contractors I know, we can they can do all this stuff without me being here physically. Okay? So again, learn a new language. Here's another one. And join a book club. I am personally learning Spanish this year. There's Because of the pandemic, there's so many ways where you can literally pay somebody to get on FaceTime with you or get on Zoom with you and y'all practice Spanish in person. Now, there's places you can practice in person here in Austin for sure, but I can pay somebody $20 an hour, Hector in, in, in you know, in Panama, in Colombia, in Venezuela, and he's happy to talk, right? And you're learning Spanish because it helps widen your opportunities, right? Helps you feel more comfortable when you go travel and helps you Spanish, helps you speak with your contractor and have a more realistic, balanced conversation life. Join a book club. Get fit. Listen, I've, I've told y'all, if y'all ever moved to a new city, go join a CrossFit. Go join a kickboxing group. Go join all that stuff. Join a boxing group. Your week should be busy, like, bumping into groups and people and talking to people because you're new to a city. And then eventually you'll say, some of this I don't want to do. And you can take some of it out of your schedule. It's a great way. Be a plus one. <laughs> right? Join online communities. And again, it talks about getting started, right? This talks about careers and whatnot. But um, all this stuff, right? Connect with connectors, meet new people, establish yourself as a value, commit to a local community. Again, a lot of this stuff, people kind of give up because they feel like, oh, Erica, you don't understand my family, my this. And I'm just telling you, life is about change, right? If you try to hold on to people like this, you will lose them, right? Some people just don't want to grow and they don't have to grow when you want them to grow. They may not want, um, <laughs> I remember this girl really liked this guy and everybody was like, he's like, oh, I'm not ready for a relationship because that's what he was trying to do, like get her away from him. And then all of a sudden he meets this other girl and gets married in like six months. And people, she's like, what happened? I'm like, he didn't want a relationship with you. He wanted one, just not with you, okay? Because <laughs> it don't take all day <laughs> to figure out what you want, okay? So I want you guys to get in some new circles where you can be appreciated. Now, I know um, a couple ladies who moved across the country got married and like a, under a year, you would think, oh, my God, Kirk, you moved to California. It's dangerous out there. She didn't got married. She don't want to live. He's a nice person. Going about her day. So it's not always the area. Yeah, 10th law, 10th law of power, man. Damn, that's facts. That's why you can't have certain conversation around people who are not doing anything. If they're not doing anything, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Like, 
say hi, bye, talk about sports and move on because they are not in a mental space to hear it, right? They're not. Unfortunately, it can be family members who have to move on from, yes, it's unfortunate. I always tell people, I get on so many calls, people are like, oh, I never give my family, I never give my family any money. I never do. I'm like, let me tell you something. The best thing you can do is make enough money so that if you throw your grandma or somebody a thousand, two thousand dollars, it ain't gonna drown you. Because 90% of people are not gonna tell their family no. They just not. I know it's a uh, I would tell my mama no, I do this. No, you're not. No, you're not. If your mama was about to be homeless on the street, you you throw her some money. You throw her some money. So let's, let's cut it out. Thank you for two dollars. Super chat, Ray Gun, his little resume. I'm telling you, and this dude's <laughs> this dude makes so much money now that when I see him. Like, again, I keep telling you, when people get a certain amount of money out, they don't be stunting on Instagram or Facebook anymore because they're like, it's almost, it seems bragging to folks in a position who are not there. I would post pictures of my trips on Facebook and people would be like, it must be nice. And I go, no, it wasn't nice all those years I was delivering pizzas and working two jobs and working three jobs and straining my damn self and having an appendix go out and doing all this extra work and then figuring out the math on new work. Right. Even on here, when people are like, oh, you sell courses. And I'm like, if I could tell you everything I invest in and do in my daily life, your brain would explode. So I'd rather you talk down to me and talk crazy to me and say, oh, you sell courses to make yourself feel better because the amount of stuff I do, you'll never do. The amount of stuff I'm invested in, you'll never do. The companies I start off to the side, you'll never know because it, it, it this levels to this stuff. Marketing skill set helps. It really does. What's up, everybody? It's sad how jealous people can be. It's sad. It's sad. <laughs> Dude, you y'all can say whatever y'all want on these posts. Y'all can do what y'all want. It's engagement. Whenever you want more and better, the bumper car people can't come with you. I'm telling you, these crash test dummies out here, they would take people right down with them. Thank you for the $10 financial hawks. Just dropping by to show some love. I'm so glad I left a lot of my high school social circle after college. I would have been broke right now with a lot of the mindsets. Yeah. And even now when people start seeing you, this is something that happens. This is really truthful. When you start going up, some of the people that are from that lower level try to grab you by the ankles and hold on. And I've seen it happen to people I know. I'm like, you know, that person doesn't even call you or care about you. They just call you because they know you're going to do something else and they want to be a part of whatever the next thing is. They don't know what you about to do, but they're going to they gonna hold on to the feet and go with you. That happens. Man, Bella, you know, if you're in certain rooms, that's what they be talking about. Eggs, and the cost of bacon. And these kids, listen, every time I go on Facebook, I'm absolutely disgusted at the amount of parents crying about school supplies, $40 school supplies, and haircuts and, and backpacks that they have to buy every year for the next 15 years for that child. They know this is coming. But if you go on Facebook, you would act like it was brand new information. Did y'all know how much these backpacks cost and these school supplies? Every year, it's the same convo about school supplies and haircuts. And, and I remember this one white lady, people got mad with her because she did a video and it went viral. And she was like, do you know how tired I've been all summer looking at these kids? Whatever supplies the teacher needs, I will give them to her. What you want? You want Chick-fil-A? You want paper? You want pencils? I'm going to give you extra. And that's the truth because they're giving you a break for nine, eight hours a day. Those kids are mostly with teachers. If you look at the average kid's life, they're mostly with a teacher. That's why you, you have these kids when they're adults. Oh, my teacher said something to me. And your parents will be like, why do you care what that teacher said? Because she's, they spent eight hours a day with that person. So if that teacher didn't like them, didn't educate them, didn't fulfill them, didn't try to speak life into them, they remember that as a child. Okay. Then you come home to some low vibrational parents who ain't doing shit. They remember that as a child, right? One of the people I pointed out in our live training, Jay Waller, the other day, he literally was living in a trailer park and he was like, he looked at his parents and said, this is everything I don't want to be. I can see it right here in front. I don't want to be none of this, none of this. <laughs> so he started a business at like 19 and now he makes 4 million a year and he's in his 30s. But people can watch and see like what they're doing, I don't want to be a part of. Some people look at you different. You say you have a plan to do this. Oh, yeah. That, that real, just real crazy. Envy is stupid. It's not even envy. I think sometimes it's comparison. And comparison is the thief of joy. You will look at somebody else's situation and be like, boy, I wish I could do that. Boy, I could do that. <laughs> sometimes being called selfish is good. It really is. I'm like, we're on a mission. If you're not on a mission, you got to get out of the way. 
watch out for gossipers too if they got time to talk about people they'll guarantee there's got nothing going on boy i tell you there was a season where i was just watching stuff on instagram and i was talking about it. i was like oh wait i need to get busy with my own stuff i gotta get off here so when i was telling people i don't watch tv i like don't watch tv um and then like now if i watch a show i binge a show right i just have to binge it because that's it and and i'm going about my life No one tells you about transitional phases of life after 30. Everyone talks to you about 20 to 30, not everything. Listen, you know why? Because they still figuring it out themselves. This is why I tell people to have friends that are about five, six, seven years older than you. Because right now it's all fun. I'm in my 30s, girl. I'm traveling. But watch your, look at your girlfriends that's in their 40s with no kids. Half of them are happy. They live in a good life. I'm not talking about those women. They usually are having a good life. But there's a segment of them like, damn, I missed that train. I missed the kid train, so either I need to go adopt a kid or I need to get uh, some more dog and go enjoy life from here. Because I was telling this person, I said, girl, the way technology is, some of us going to live to be 90 years old. So let's say you're 40. You got 50 years. Let's just say, let's say I'm going to give them 30 just to be nice. Right? I'm going to give them to 70 years old, right? We can cut it back a little bit. But the way the technology is, it, we can all live to be 90 if we take care of ourselves. So let's say 70. They got 30 more. What are they doing with them 30 years? You really have to sit down and have a conversation with yourself. What are you doing for those years? I tell myself, I'm like, girl, what are we doing in the next 50 years? We're going to become a billionaire. We're going to buy a bunch of real estate. We're going to go back to farming. We're going to go start a foundation. We're going to go build a school. <laughs> what are we about to do for the next 50 years? What generally do we want it to look like? Right? We can't plan everything down to the nut, to the nub, <laughs> to the to the inch of life, but in general, there should be a plan you're following. This is why you meet people in their 50s talking about the clubs and the, and the mall and they back hurt at their job. And you're like, baby, you should have been on from that. Right? And people get real mad when you start trying to tell them, hey, you should move on from that. You in your 50s. You can't tell me what to do. Everybody's life ain't the same. It isn't. Everybody's life is not the same. But if you're in your 50s talking about stuff that you were talking about in your 20s, still talking about women on the corner, and you've been married for 20 years, you need to go on with some new conversation. You need some new goals. You need a new social circle. Okay? Get into travel groups. Those are great for traveling if you want to travel. Yes! There's travel groups I want to join right now myself. I've got people traveling with me to Panama and to Zanzibar. We're going to do a Croatia and a Greece, but I got to see um, the location stuff. But but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, the people that are going on trips with me, they usually are no drama. No drama. They chill. They keep you pushing. You know? Enjoy the time. Enjoy the travel. Uh, most time people in your immediate circle want to use you. That's why they prefer you remain stagnant. <sighs> you know, unfortunately, that's some of it, right? That's some of it. Yeah, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Some people don't want to see you do better than them. Yeah, facts. I try to talk to my friends and family, give them solid advice that most don't follow. Listen, I had a I had a family member get in a car wreck and got this big lump sum of money. I told them what to do. They didn't do it. Years later, they're like, girl, I should have did what you said. I'm like, mm-hmm. Then I had an aunt that retired once. She had like 300, 300 grand and a lump sum. I said, you can put in this dividend stock. You can get this much money a year and you don't have to work anymore. You can just chill. 10, 15% dividend off this money. You good. Spent all the money on goofy shit for two years and then went back to work. <laughs> so it's like, I, you can tell people solid advice, um, but they're the stagnation of who they're around they're going to do the, the majority of time they're going to do what they're around them doing. Exactly. When you see somebody who's younger and they start tripping, I'm like, girl, listen, in five years, you won't care about none of that. <laughs> you won't care about none of that. You know what I mean? Or you'll be like, girl, do this. But be always be careful, right? Pay attention to who's your older and your younger friends. Like, Make sure they're happy in life, content, have, have purpose, have mission. Be smart about that. We're all the same person experiencing life in a bunch of different bodies, which means every person you meet is really just you living in another body. That could be a way to say it for sure. Toxic people have no sense of decorum. They try to network with their neighbors and use emotions for business dealing. Could be stupid. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, just it was just funny. I mean, when I got to the counter, I was like, honey, that's not how you speak to customers. And she was a grown ass woman, like 40 plus. You know what I'm saying? Like 50 plus, maybe. Couldn't tell, you know, because everybody dyes their hair down. Um, but. If you don't have decorum and you don't have tack, when you try to get in some of these fields, it won't work. It will not work. It, you just won't be reinvited. How about that? They don't even stand when you when you get a YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, they they get real crazy. 
I love going to museums and many of them have free conference in the summer. Yeah. When, when I start talking to people about jazz festivals and stuff, and they start looking at me crazy. I just laugh. I go, yeah, you, you keep going to them, them hood concerts where people shooting up the place. I'm going to sit out here and enjoy this. I have so much to say about all this based on my own experiences, but long story short, it's all accurate. I appreciate it. Thank you. There's 376 people here. Make sure y'all hit the like button. If nothing else, you see all these YouTube videos. I don't have friends and people are horrible. A lot of people have low self-esteem that they can't stand being around more developed folks. Yeah. I mean, when I started seeing all these videos of YouTube, I don't have friends. When you actually watch the video, you start asking the person, what are their hobbies? Like you can see it in the chat. You'd be like, what are your hobbies? You just come home and watch TV? Well, how are you going to meet people? <laughs> how are you going to meet them? <laughs> That's all you do? You're going to have to get out of the house. You're going to have to join some groups. You're going to have to join a boxing club. You're going to have to do something. You need to have some hobbies, right? Even the one girl that went viral when she was saying, I wish I had more baddie friends. What's crazy is she did not even, she's not a baddie. I looked at her. She's just an average looking chick. That's in shape. And, and so, so, sadly, in our society, if you're in shape, it's like, oh, girl, look at you in shape. Um, but the fact that she didn't want more women who did this or did that, she just said baddies. It was like her mindset was so limited. I was like, avoid a woman like that at all costs. Because she doesn't have anything else but just to go out to the club and people look at her. That's her pinnacle of her life. You know what I'm saying? I registered for a gala conference this month. It comes at every time. Oh, girl, I'm so excited. I have I've looked at gowns to go to banquets this year. I don't found my mister some outfits for him to go to the banquets this year. Like he don't even know, but he about like this is the time to shine. Right. Book events are a great way to meet people. Yep. I've been learning Spanish too. Spanish is basically the second language. You, it really is. And I'd like catching people off guard, like, mm -hmm, blah, 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 blah. like just catch them off guard. Start speaking Spanish. Just see what happens when you do that. They'd be like, oh, shit. I think most of the priority principles apply to social circles. Yeah. Be willing to spend some money around successful people. Yeah. Sometimes you pay to get in the room. And, and a lot of times what you got to realize, when you get to a certain level of people, even if they're wealthy, they like to budget too, right? <laughs> right? Like we went to Mexico with people that did well. They still were like, hey, that, that's too expensive. Let's go to here. And it was still a great time, right? Um, or you start doing cook, cookouts or events or bring a chef to a nice house. It's just different ways. Toastmasters is a great way to meet people. Yeah. The opera, all this stuff. Raise your own value too. I think especially we can sense when you're just trying to use them and bring nothing to the circle. Yeah, you should be. Again, this is about life developing yourself. So when I would meet people who were like, "Oh, I'm, I'm not dating anybody," I'm saying, "I'm like, okay, well, what do you want to do as a person? Right? The dating is great. Like that's a great ideal. You should be doing this and that. But uh, what are you doing as a person to develop you? You know what I mean? Because then you're just gonna have two people sitting in a room looking at each other, and neither one of them has plans, right? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Definitely hit the like button. Hit the like button. Listen, this is this is how sad this is. Every year we see the same people. School supplies so expensive, yet parents don't mind spending two hundred dollars every few weeks to get their hair done. They don't. Haircut, backpacks. I mean, it, 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 literally. Every time I see these little backpack drives, I go see how much backpack. That'd be 25 bucks. Same backpacks, even in inflation, 25 bucks. Yeah, give supplies to the whole class and keep it pushing. These parents be acting like, why? Alumni associations, yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know what I mean? The same pencils. Like, I mean, if you just, there's so much stuff. If you missed Erica's live training yesterday, you missed a good one. No one wants to be an old man in the club with iron crease in his jeans. <laughs> I mean, move around, man. Go to Essence Festival. Be the, be, the, be the older man at Essence Festival and win a lot of ladies. Yeah. 
at my old job full of family men with lots of education and resources. There was an undeveloped specimen who walked into the cafeteria talking about clubbing. They looked at him perplexed. Yeah, because they start they start going. If you notice, these groups of married men are going to go to football games, golf, golf events, different stuff. Like I bought a ticket one year to Dale's golf event out here. And I was just like by myself just and I just realized everybody around me was either married or they were white collar workers who got the day off to go to the golf event. So it was a great place to be if you if you were looking, depending on what you're looking for. Right. So, again, people uh, realize they're in the wrong room. Yeah. Stagnation leads to depression. Yeah. Yep. Major cities in the Carolinas have awesome festival associations, too. Mm hmm. Um, he actually is. He yes, he is. Well, I would say new construction. Yes. There you go. Yeah. I was getting an IV drip, and the woman beside me, they they sat us beside each other, like, "Oh, you guys might like each other." We started talking. This woman made like ten million dollars from a government contract, and just living off of it, right? <laughs> but if you didn't know it, if you look at her, she looked like. You know, just a blue collar lady enjoying her day. But then when you like, she showed me her Instagram. That's private. Like she let me be, you know, friend friend her on there. That girl's got cars and trips and stuff, but it has to be private because she got this government contract. So trust me, there's people out here living very well. It depends on where you are. But I would have never met her unless we were what at the IV drip place in the back in the really nice room. Come on, man. Oh, my God. This guy told me his hobby was his daughter. Sir, get it together. Oh, my God. There is an expiration date on some of them clubs. <laughs> they do. They walk around looking regular as hell. You know, after a certain age, it is weird, right? They start saying what's going on with people, right? Um, and, and so, again, I've been on here almost an hour. I, I didn't want to draw this out forever. It's 360 people here. Hit the, definitely hit the like button. But but a lot of the stuff you're hearing and seeing um, when it comes to crime or, or victim of a bystander crime or all this stuff, a lot of this stuff is just your social circle. Who are you hanging out with? Why are you over there? How would you meet this woman? When you start saying, it, I just met her out in the street. Okay, but but where did you meet her? What, how did you meet her, right? It's like a lot of times these people don't want accountability for them meeting lower quality people and spending time with them, right? They don't want it. They don't want to hear that. So again, and again, so many ways I can go with this. So many ways I can go with this. The overarching of this conversation, though, is stop spending your time, a bulk of your time with avoidable people. Just stop, right? Just go different places, talk to different people, go to separate different situations, okay? Because, um, you know, it's easy to be average. It's easy for people to really not, I mean, let's just be honest. It's easy for so many black people to not do well. And then people go, go this racism. And then you start talking to them like, okay, have you bought a house? Have you did this? What's your job? And then you start realizing, oh, it's not racist, baby. That's you. <laughs> that's you, baby. That's you. Because the nine times out of ten, you start talking like, well, I'm doing better than all my family. Well, then you start asking about their family. You realize their family all live in the projects. Well, baby, you doing all right. You're not in the projects. But is this this level you want to compare yourself to? Right? You have to really reevaluate. What do you want to do? Not, oh, I'm doing better than my family. That's the first thing I hear from a lot of people. And it's it's very scary. It's like you're comparing yourself to uh, somebody who's, who's hand, arms tied behind their back. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. I'm taking my mom and niece on vacation now every year. I enjoy, Yeah, I used to tell people like, oh, my family, 20, 30 people deep every year go around Thanksgiving on a cruise or we go to the beach uh, the week of Christmas. People are like, well, is your family all in the same career field? I'm like, no, they just take the time off from their jobs. And people would, would freak out. They'd be like, what? They could just take a whole week off. I'm like, yes. This is what happens when you have a career, not when you have a job and you're just showing up to your job trying to get every dollar. Right? So when you have a career, you could do stuff. You can plan trips where your whole family goes. Um, but everybody won't get that. Right. So again, is your social circle holding you back? Are there people that you try to talk about new concepts and ideals? Um, 
and, and, and you realize like they don't want to move forward, you have to let that person go. And this is one of the biggest things I tell y'all, like this year and the last year have been such a real, a year of reveal to me that there are people who, you know, when I start saying, Hey man, I'm going to therapy and I'm learning all this stuff. They started pulling back and I was like, Oh, I feel, I see it. I see it. You, you know, I see it when we're all like damaged and hurt, you're cool. But when we start asking you to, Hey, you got to repair yourself. You have to work out today. You have to run. Like I ran this morning and I was like, so exhausted, but I was like, I got to keep going for my day. And when you realize, when you realize that that person is comfortable in a dysfunctional position, you have to move away from them. It's really sad, right? It just is. And so when you start going out here, what's so funny to me is the people that have been go-getters, oh man, I call them up. Hey, like, <laughs> I'll just tell you like this. The other day I got a call to go, hey, come out here to LA to this mastermind we're doing. I was like, oh man, I'm busy. Like, well, if you don't want to come to mastermind, you can just come to the dinner we're having at this really expensive restaurant. And I started laughing because I was like, that's the power of the different type of people you want to talk to. Right. Like if I if, I, if it wasn't for the weather and we were both not feeling great, I would have flew out there. I'd have been like, oh, let's go to L.A. But that requires you to do be actively going into new circles, circles and different conversations with people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope this made sense um, because a lot of times what ends up happening, you have to lower yourself to stay in places and you shouldn't. That's why we have so many people having this like very depressed Thanksgiving and Christmas conversation where they're like, oh, I have to go home for Thanksgiving. And they're like so depressed about it because they don't want to be there. Right. And we see a lot of that. Right. Um, where people are depressed because they have to go home. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to communicate with those people. You can go spend your winters in Cabo. You can go spend your Thanksgiving in Cabo. Like you, you literally have to assess who are you hanging out with and who you're spending time with. So, um, be, you know, think think for it, you guys. That's that's all I can say on this one. I think the, I think I've killed it the conversation. But you're gonna have to get uncomfortable in 2023. You can't hang out in the same circles and go, why won't my family and friends do this? Because they don't want to. Simple as that. They don't want to. You're going to have to go outside that social circle and find new people to bring in. So anyways, this is your girl, Erica, Classy Climb Blog. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for enjoying the channel. And I will be going on a break in February, but I definitely want you guys to catch the last two live trainings. One's going to be on Middleman to Millions, uh, and the next one's going to be on Credit. Again, I'm testing out different banks, new banks, and I'm seeing how that stuff adds in. Um, I And Victoria kept asking me where I'm from high school. I didn't grow up in Austin, Texas. I've only been here 10 years. Um, but also, I think, oh, no, I have three. I have three. Um, one is like high returns. I think that's what we're calling the live training. High returns. It's it's literally about me telling you like in-depth knowledge on captive uh, insurance and investing and where I'm getting 20% returns at and where you could do it, different things like that. It'll be a separate training. But uh, those are the last three lives for a while. And then I'll be on break for February and for my birthday in March. I'll be in Hawaii. And so I'm going to be gone. So <laughs> I definitely want you guys to enjoy the channel. I hope this information has been good for you guys. And I hope you enjoy the next couple interviews we have coming up. So, all right, you guys, this is your girl Erica from the Classic Island blog. Have a great day.